so in the previous class we have seen about uh, uh, the java what and where and why then followed by history then followed by internals of java program then we have seen jdk jre and jvm then we have seen some programs about classes objects methods then we have seen static method now we will see about uh, some concepts which is related to method overloading and uh, constructor overloading and we have also seen this keyword and later uh, we will see about uh, abstract class interface and uh, the use of buffered reader the n exception and okay so now uh, i am going to start with a, a new program so consider um, consider i am going to create a calculator program so then same thing public static void main so then uh, what i am going to do is i am going to create uh, two methods namely public void uh, add is the first method which can take two parameters a b and i am going to create another method called uh, again add i am going to pass three parameter and previously i am going to create another method with no parameter like this okay so now you can see that i have created a, a class calculator and i have created four methods and uh, four methods the name of the four methods are add and the first parameter it doesn't have parameter and the second method it has two parameter and third it has three parameter so let me write a logic so so if you if, if there is no if there is nothing to add uh, the, there is no parameter to add so it will just display nothing to add if we have two parameter so we can just uh, print that a plus b like that if we have three parameter a plus b plus c yeah now we'll uh, just print uh, just will create the object called calculator c is equal to new calculator then c dot add 10 comma 20 c dot add nothing c dot add 10 comma 20 comma 30 c dot add 10 comma 70 while saving this So now what happened is I have created a class called calculator and I have used uh, uh, three methods namely uh, each method it has the same name uh, that is add same name that is add and we have uh, again with the two parameter then again three parameter like that so what I have created is I have created object and I have just called uh, the first uh, met, like the, the, this logic is like c dot add 10 comma 20 uh, which will, what it will do is it will just check for the two parameter method 
So first it will check for the add. So add is, we have uh, three ways in which we can add. And then we'll, we are passing two uh, parameters, that is 10, 20. What compiler it will do is it will just check for the add method with two parameter. Now it finds this and it performs the addition of two number, that is 30. Then at the, after completing that, it will execute this slide, that is c.add. And again, it will check for the possibilities of add method. Again, we have three possibilities, but the first possibility matches because there is no parameter here and here. So it will just print nothing to add. Then we have another thing, c.add 10, 20, 30. Again, it will check for the possibility of method. We have three possibilities and it satisfies the third method. So it will just print 10 plus 20 plus 30. Again, it will have, it will go for the next parameter. So c.add. It, again, it checks for the possibilities and it will execute the second method. So this concept is called as method overloading. That means we are using the same method in three ways with the help of three, with, with, with specifying three different types of parameters. For example, um, we, we, there is no parameter uh, here in add, but uh, here we have two parameter, here we have three parameter. But the concept is like the method name is the same, that is add. So if you use same method name with different parameter, then it is said to be the concept of method overloading. So then it is said to be the concept of method overloading. Okay, so let me compile this. So run it. Yeah, first it executes the first one. 10, 20. So 10 plus 20 is 30. Then the second one is there is no uh, parameter. So it displays nothing to add. Then the third one is 10, 20, 30. So it is displaying 60. And the third one is 10, 70 and it is, dis and it is displaying 70. So this is all about uh, method over uh, loading, where we can have uh, different parameters, but they use us the common method. In our case, it is uh, something like add. So add is a method name, but it uses different parameters. For example, the first, there is no parameter in the first one. There is two parameter in the second one and the third three parameter in the third one. So this type of, uh, Thing is said to be a method overloading. So any doubt in this uh, concept guys, method uh, overloading. Okay. If you have any queries, you can post it in the group chat. Everyone is okay with it? Yeah, the question is why um, there is static keyword mentioned in the void name? Yeah, this is the question. Why, the, why, so why the main method is public static void main? So we know that the main method is represented by void main in C and C++, it's same as in Java. This void main, uh, for executing this void main, there is no need to creation of any object. For example, in previous case, for example, in our first program, uh, where it is, where it is, Java. Okay, class one. Okay. So in the first program, sorry. In the first program, are we creating any object for uh, this first to display this void main? No, we are not creating any object for this first. But this void main executes directly because this void main is a static method. Okay, I think that answers your question. That is why uh, we are using static keyword in the void main. Because if the method is a void main, and it is specified as the static method, or static keyword, then it will execute automatically without creating any object. So that is the answer for this question. Okay. So is there any other doubt in this calculator program?
do you have any doubt in this calculator program okay so next what we are going to do is we are going to see uh, the next main important technique called this con uh, the constructor so what uh, we did normally is you can see the pro previous programs we are assigning the value to this e name eid and the address after creating uh, after creating the object this is the object creation after creating the object using the, that object we are assigning the values to this e name eid and the address what i am going to do is i am going to assign the value during the object creation itself so this can be done with the help of constructor and there are uh, different types of constructors are there so the first one is uh, constructor uh, uh, there, there are normally two types of constructor one is uh, constructor with uh, uh, yeah constructor uh, default constructor and a non default constructor uh, the default constructor you know when you execute a program the java like for example if i type uh, java p space calculator Uh, it will create a default constructor for you okay without any uh, parameter so there are two types of constructor that is constructor with parameter and constructor without parameter constructor without parameter is said to be a default constructor and constructor with parameter we are going to see okay so now uh, we'll see uh, we will create a program new program maybe for uh, uh, maybe we'll create uh, student demo where every student will have string name in the age then uh, in tarig register number then we will have public static void main string a or gs then uh, i am going to use a method called uh, public void get detail or i will use just return type with return type string public string get detail so this will return the name is plus name age is plus age register number is plus origin so what i'm going to do is um, i'm going to create an object for student demo student demo sd equal to new student demo sd dot get detail like that so what i have did is i have created a string name int age int register number then i have created get detail so what i am going to do is uh, in previous cases we have created the object then after creating an object using that object we have assigned the values to name register number and reg and age so what i am going to do is i am going to pass the value in the constructor itself sorry in the, in the object in the class uh, in the object uh, declaration itself for example like this name is xyz then age is 21 register number is 1 2 3 like that so what i am going to do is while creating an object itself i am going to pass the value and uh, to this name age and reg for that we have to use the constructor so public to create a constructor we have to just put a public followed by the class name followed by the three parameters in which i am going to pass 
so this can be the same name as this can be the same name as the data member name so we know that if you have a same name uh, if you have a same name as a uh, like a data member name data uh, member name and uh, the method name so we can use this keyword so this dot name equal to name so this dot age equal to age this dot reg equal to reg so i've just given in a single line so i'm going to save this okay so this is all about constructor so while creating the object itself i can pass the value maybe like x y z 21 123 this if i pass this there should be an equivalent constructor so that this will get retrieved here so string name in the age in the register number so string name is same as x y z age is 21 then register number is 123 and this dot name equal to name this dot register age equal to age this dot register number equal to register number like that so this will get assigned to this variable name age and register number and using this get detail, I am printing all the values. So now ST dot get detail will have the value. So this since this this will just return the value. So I will use system dot out dot print ln sd dot get details. So now let me compile. So Java C student demo, then Java student demo. So I will get the van like this. Okay. So now we'll uh, see about uh, the more theory about the constructor. Constructor is same as the method name. For example, this is get detail is a method, and similarly. Constructor is the same as the method and the method name of this should be the same name as the class name for example student demo again student demo and the main thing is the constructor should not return any value there should not be any return keyword inside the constructor suppose what happens if we put a return uh, keyword specifying hello message now we will see what happens so it will tell uh, an, an unexpected return value. That means compiler will not, sorry, constructor will not return any value. Constructor is used uh, or automatically loaded when, when you create an object like this. So this, there are two types of constructor. This is a constructor with parameter, constructor with parameter because we are passing three parameters and we can have a constructor without parameter also like this. So a, a constructor without parameter like this, maybe you can put system dot out dot print ln. Empty constructor. Like this. So if you compile this, what happens is, if you compile this, you'll get, uh, sure. You'll get the same result. So what it will do is uh, it will just so this is again we have a constructor overloading similar to a method overloading uh, with same name as uh, the the constructor uses the same uh, constructor name but we have a different uh, parameter in it. First we are initially we have zero parameter and we have three parameter. This is constructor overloading. And what it will do is while creating the object, it will just uh, when you pass the value into the uh, like when you create an object, when you pass the value, it will just check for the uh, 
constructor which has the three parameter for example the first constructor it will have like uh, a empty constructor and the second will have three parameters so this matches so x y z is assigned to name 21 is assigned to age and 1 2 3 is assigned to register number so then you will get uh, uh, that this get details will be displayed and then it will uh, have uh, we'll have the uh, display kind of thing in sd.get details so again i will repeat this constructor is a special uh, member method uh, which doesn't return any value the rules to be followed in the constructor is the constructor name should be same name as the class name and the constructor should not return any value and the main concept in java uh, in constructor is when you create the object itself the constructor will be gets loaded and uh, we can have the constructor overloading also for example we can have we can create another constructor like this assuming i am not going to take age so if i pass only the two uh, kind of if i pass only this two thing maybe uh, x y z and uh, and 21 so it, it, this will check for uh, the constructor which has uh, the two parameter now uh, we have three constructor constructor without parameter constructor with three parameter constructor with two parameter what it will do is it will assign the value for name and age itself and it will not assign the value for register number so we'll get the register number value as zero i think okay i forgot to close the brackets So now you can see uh, the name is XYZ, the age is 21 and REG is 0 because we are not passing this REG but we are printing that so it will get a default value as 0. So suppose if I pass, suppose if I create another constructor by passing 3 value maybe this I can take as SD2 and if I put some register number value 1, 2, 3 we put sd2.get details so now you can see the first one it is executing the third constructor and the second, second one it calls the second constructor and suppose if you use a uh, uh, yeah, default constructor like this maybe i can take the sd3 so every value it will be set to null because so now you can see so first it is calling the third constructor which has only the two arguments and the second one it calls the second constructor which has three arguments and if if uh, the third one it calls so this one calls the uh, default constructor so the default constructor it will print empty constructor first like this and then it prints the content of name is null, age is zero, and register number is zero. So this is all about uh, the constructor. So constructors are mainly used, uh, are mainly called when when we create the object. So it can be it can be called automatically when we create the object. And we have two types of constructors. One is constructor with return type. Sorry, uh, constructor uh, without parameter and constructor with parameter. Constructor without parameter is said to be a default constructor and we can also have constructor overloading that means the same constructor and with the different number of parameters and so this this constructor plays uh, so every programmer they will use this kind of constructor and uh, every advanced concepts they can have this constructor concept so that they can implement so many things and uh, we can have many predefined classes also they can have many types of constructors and uh, so that we'll uh, see that in the upcoming classes and uh, just uh, as of now just understand the basic concept of constructor and how it is used and uh, what is mean by constructor overloading like that so any doubt guys on constructor and uh, uh, like uh, how to create a constructor overloading like that maybe we can have some quick uh, uh, chat session so that uh, you can uh, you can see that so the first question is what happens if we have two constructor with same argument and give a different uh, uh, 
uh, different values for both. For example, let me take uh, this one maybe. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this. So the question is, what happens if we have a two method or two constructor and uh, with the uh, three parameter same, same as the three parameter first string name, int age, int register number again. So uh, we'll just check this. Yeah, it will show an error because uh, in line number 14, so we are in line number uh, 14. So this is line number 14. Maybe I will just uh, view status bar. This is line number 14. And in line number 14, what is uh, declared is like uh, public static, uh, sorry, public student demo with three parameter, which is same as the previous constructor with three parameter. And it is showing an error like constructor student demo with three parameters already defined in the class student demo like that. So that means once we create a constructor, we can't able to like, we can we can't able to do the same kind of constructor in the next thing. For example, if you do like a student demo string a name, int age and int register number, the same kind of constructor cannot be used at the next uh, level of uh, thing. So I will explain the constructor overloading again. Uh, uh, like, so if we have like a constructor or if you have a method with a different parameter, then it is said to be a method overloading. And uh, the same same happens to the constructor. If we have a multiple constructors, but if we have a different parameter into it, then it is said to be a constructor overloading. When you create an object, it will matches for the corresponding constructor, and it will and it will assign the corresponding constructor value to it, and it will get displayed. And uh, we have two types of constructor. One is default constructor and uh, uh, constructor with parameter. If we have a default constructor, then there, there won't be any parameter uh, that is passed to that constructor. Uh, then we can have a constructor with parameter where any number of parameters can be passed. And the rules to be followed in constructor is constructor should not return any value. And the constructor name should be same name as the class name. Any doubt so far? Any doubt, guys? Yeah, for each constructor, we have to pass some different uh, uh, objects. So, like for example, uh, the question is, uh, like, can we have? Uh, can we have a same uh, object for different constructor? We can have the same value for the different constructor, but for example, we can use this one like this. So SD1. So I'm I'm using this SD1. This I'm I'm using this SD1 for this three constructor. It will work. But what happens is it will just uh, overwrite the previous thing. For example, this SD object. The scope is initially it has it will pass the two parameter and it will get the result. Again, this SD will be uh, like will be assigned with a different value and it will uh, uh, it will pass with a new value. So then again, SD with a default constructor it will pass a new value like that. But instead of using the same object name, I will use different object name like this. So I will use SD two. Then I will use SD3. So to new student demo. Okay. okay. So any doubt, guys? So the next question is, can't we assign same parameter in both constructors? Yeah, we, we, we saw that. So this is the constructor. Again, if you create another constructor, this, is, this would be an error, but you can change up the value. For example, 
So instead of specifying the string name first, you can put in the age, then followed by string name like that. You can interchange the parameters and you can use. But the order in which the same thing we used previously, we should not be used for the next one. So for example, you can you should not use the same order in the second one because we, it is already defined. So, but you can you can just swap up uh, with the age. Uh, for example, you can put like this, just like this. So you can first initialize, or uh, first you can put age. Then at last you can put the uh, string name like that. You can put and you can use. This is possible. Maybe I can create one more constructor, uh, one more object. So says SD4 and I will pass the name at the last. So now I will print that. Oh, I can compile. Oh, forgot. What did I missed? I forgot to put a semicolon here. Yeah, this is possible. So any doubt guys on constructor you can type it in chat so we will discuss because it's a very important uh, topics that's to be covered in all the versions of Java and all the technologies used in Java. Any doubt guys? Any doubt? Hey. hey, shall we proceed to the next topic? Yeah. So, what kind of topic you want to explain it again in constructor? Okay. So, I will, uh, since there is a request in the chat, so I will uh, just uh, 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 explain. Again, the chat thing, sorry, again, the co concept of constructor. So I have created a student demo like name, age, and register number. And I have created the constructor. So this is the first constructor. Constructor normally, it will be start with public followed by class name with no parameter. So since there is no parameter, I'm printing uh, system.out.println an empty constructor. And then I have created a constructor with the three arguments where it starts from name, then age, register number. I'm passing this with the help of this dot name. Again, I am creating a same kind of uh, constructor with three parameters. But what I have did is I have interchanged the value of age, interchanged the parameter thing, age, then register number, then name like that. Then I have passed the, this and uh, again I am uh, creating another constructor with two arguments. I'm passing the value. Then I have created a general uh, return type method called get detail to get the detail. And uh, first I'm creating an object called SD and I am passing two value. So it will check for the two parameter constructor. So the first it is not matching, not matching and it's not matching, but it's matched here. So this will assign this dot name and this dot age. So we'll get the you will get the name is age, uh, name is name and age is age and the register number is zero because there is no register number is passed. And the second, it will it will pass uh, this value like x, y, z, 21 and it, it checks for the constructor with three parameter where the first parameter takes strings and the second one is integer and the third one is integer. So it will just check for the parameter in that order. So we have two possibilities of three parameters. So, but here it starts with string name here it starts int age so it will assign here like this so 
so it will take this and it will pass so again the constructor with no parameter so constructor with no parameter is called then again the constructor with uh, uh, the two integer first like 21 and 123 that is age and register number followed by name so here comes it will check for the possibility we have two possibility here so it starts with string name but here it starts with int age so it will take this as the uh, constructor and it will pass the value so this is all about the constructor overloading okay everyone is okay with that okay fine so we go to the next topic uh, so we have covered up to this one <coughs> sorry so uh, so we'll go for abstract class and interface and uh, before going to that uh, yeah okay. yeah we'll go for abstract class and interface okay so now uh, now let me have a, a little quiz you can uh, give the answer in the group chat okay so what are the different types of constructors available okay the default one what are the two what are the two types yeah, the, there are two types of constructor one is default constructor and uh, and uh, parameter param constructor with parameter and what is meant by constructor with uh, sorry constructor uh, what is mean by constructor overloading what is mean by constructor overloading okay multiple constructors with multiple parameters yeah that is that's a that's a thing yeah any constructor with different parameters okay so okay so now we'll uh, go for the next topic called abstract class now uh, what is the uh, again i will ask you a question what is uh, what is the use of the command java p what is the use of the command java p what does it displays java p it's not java c java p for example java p space student demo yeah when you when you just type java p space student demo it will just give a abstract part of your class and for example in the employee in the student data i am using uh, like we are using three uh, uh, thing like name age register number and uh, we are having four types of parameter constructors like constructor with parameter and constructor without parameter and this is constructor without parameter and constructor with parameter we have this one then we have a method get detail which is of which which is, which is returning string and then we have a public static void this is called as abstraction what is mean by abstraction abstraction is nothing but process of showing only essential information to the users so for example if you type java p student demo it is showing only the essential information for example this get detail has a logic in student demo for example this is the logic of get detail it will return the value and this is the logic of this constructor and this is a logic for each and every constructor but what what we do what we are doing is when you type java p space student demo it is just showing the essential information about the student demo right it, that means it is it is just telling what are the variables we have used and what are the methods we have used that's it it is hiding the internal implementation details from us so the process of abstraction is so showing only the essential information and hiding the uh, logics from the user is said to be abstract class so yeah so this concept is called as abstraction so we have seen classes objects 
then we have seen encapsulation so we'll see uh, inheritance and and one more thing what we have seen in method overloading and constructor overloading is polymorphism one name having many forms for example let me take uh, calculator.java so it has one name add but it has different forms without parameter two parameter three parameter so this is called as polymorphism the name poly represents many morphism is like forms so it more than one forms it's said to be what polymorphism and encapsulation we know the process of binding data and methods or process of having a, a data member and member method in a single unit is called encapsulation then we see uh, classes classes is nothing but the collection of data member and member methods are in in, in a normal uh, layman version we can call it as classes nothing but uh, uh, nouns and verbs the object is nothing but the instance of a class then uh, we see about uh, abstraction now uh, so abstraction is process of hiding the essential information and showing only uh, some information is called as said to be abstract class so we'll see uh, the real program for this abstract class So, what we'll do is, can you just uh, give me a scenario for abstract class so that we'll write a code because I am bored to write my own program so that you can give your, your own scenario and we can do it. Can you just give some uh, uh, scenario for uh, uh, for uh, for writing abstract program? Maybe you can type it in chat. Okay, so let me start with the concepts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, So before that there is a question how difference is polymorphism and parameterized constructor So if we have a multiple constructor with a different parameter, then it is said to be polymorphism again if we have a method, same method name with the different parameters is said to be a polymorphism. So again, so this public demo, we have so many constructors, four constructors, but each constructor will have a different parameter. So this is also an example for polymorphism. So this is what we are doing, dealing with, dealing with, dealing with constructors. But uh, in calculator, we have different method, uh, like everything is said to be a, a method. It's not a constructor you can see add is a method so this is also an example for uh, polymorph it is just a concept that is uh, that's it okay so now we'll see about uh, uh, abstract class so what I'm going to do is so you know like before that I will tell you on scenario for abstract class we know that uh, have you all uh, got some uh, like products have you got some like uh, manual for a products maybe like uh, if you if you if you got a car uh, maybe you will get some uh, usage manual for that car or if you get a bike you will get some uh, usage or user guide for a bike like that Yeah, so what they will do is they will they will show you only the essential information how to use the uh, bike or how to like how to make a self service to that bike how to uh, how to wash a bike like when to give a service when not to what what should be done what what not should be done like that like that so they, they will just give you some essential information about that uh, bike or a vehicle. So they will hide the implementation detail. Whether they will give you the engine details, like uh, uh, how, what, what kind of engine they made, or uh, what kind of stuffs they are inside, that they won't show you that. So this is an example for abstraction. And also we can uh, we can we can have a common abstract uh, uh, 
uh, class and we, we can it, this can be used for different classes also for example i am going to write a program so first the abstract class can be created with the help of abstract keyword maybe we can put like this maybe we will take a real a very good example like abstract class operating system abstract class operating system so assuming i am going to write a scenario for a, uh, for this abstract operating system is a abstract class in which it will have methods like abstract abstract void etos then abstract void install os then abstract void upgrade os now this is an abstract class called operating system in which we have three methods abstract void get os abstract void install os and abstract void upgrade os have they given any implementation for example in previous case when you take uh, uh, when you take when you take like um, uh, employee class student demo this is the method and that has the implementation sorry uh, this is the constructor and this is the method that has the implementation but now you can see uh, we have an abstract class and we have a method without any implementation right so abstract class is a generic class which have the method but this method will not have any implementation then you can ask me where the implementation it will be so the implementation it will be in the subclass for example class windows assuming i am creating uh, uh, another class or let me do like this so i am going to save this as abstract operating system dot java okay so you can see only the class with the method that all the method is like uh, there is there is no implementation at all for example there is no implementation for get get, get os there is no implementation for install os there is no implementation for upgrade os i have saved this as operating system dot java can we able to run this uh, operating system dot java can type in uh, chat so i am trying to comp uh, compile it can you able to run this operating system no you can't able to do that because there is no public static void main so this abstract class it's a generic class or it's a common class that have the abstract method but it doesn't have any implementation but you can ask me where the implementation it will be so the implementation it will be on the different class maybe like we can have class windows so the implementation of the abstract class operating system will be implemented in this windows windows program right? class windows the name of this java program where the implementation of this operating system uh, where is that the implementation of this operating system will have the implementation in the another class called windows so maybe we will try this public 
static void main and this can be done with the help of extends that means we are going to use the operating system class and we are going to extend that operating system class and we are going to create the subclass for that operating system class called windows So now we, we should write an implementation for operating system here. For example, so without the abstract keyword, I can put so I can put. Uh, I can put the implementation in the subclass of the abstract method or abstract uh, class getting installing then upgrading so what I have did is I have created an operating system dot java but this operating system java is an uh, abstract class and this abstract class will have the method get OS, install OS and upgrade OS which is common and without, without any implementation where I am going to implement that in the subclass. So I have implemented that in subclass and I am going to use that in the object. So windows w equal to new windows. So now I can put w dot get OS w dot install OS then w dot upgrade OS so now I will save this as Windows, that Windows or Windows, Windows, Windows dot Java. So I'm going to compile Java C Windows dot Java, Java Windows. So Java Windows. Yeah, now we are getting getting installing and upgrading. So this is the concept of abstract that means it is a class that have the method but there is no implementation at all. So the implementation can be done in the subclass of that abstract class. So the subclass for the abstract class is windows. So windows extends operating system where operating system is the abstract class and windows is the subclass and the main thing is we should implement all the abstract methods what we are specifying in operating system so we have we have implemented the uh, logic for get os install os and upgrade os then uh, we'll use something called uh, uh, like the, we, we are just creating an ordinary object and we are uh, just getting it. so the main thing is when we want to create a subclass for another class, we should use the keyword called extends. Extends is a keyword which is similar to uh, the concept of inheritance. So Windows is the base class for, sorry, Windows is the uh, child class for the parent class operating system. Okay. And also I want to ask you one question. What is the... What is the parent class for all the classes in Java? When you write a program in Java, by default it will create a parent class for us. What is the default uh, parent class we'll get when you when you write a Java program? 
that will be the next question what what is the what what will be your answer so it's not main so the answer is object when you create any program in java by default it will be extending the base class called object can you all uh, get my audio hello can you all hear me okay so again i will explain you uh, I, i will ask you a question like what is the base class for all the classes in uh, java so the base class for all the classes in java is object so can everyone hear me because i am getting a message that i uh, the sound is lost something like that can you all hear me yeah i think there is uh, there is a no can you speak sujata so that uh, if we hear you maybe we can let me take you to the unmute sujata can you speak hello hello can you hear me now okay 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 we can start we'll start i think there is an echo i think someone has to be muted okay mute all okay so any doubt in upstart class so the upstart class is a generic class where you can put all the methods uh so yeah the abstract class is a generic class so it is represented by the abstract keyword and this abstract uh, class will have uh, the abstract methods and this abstract methods will not have any implementation this implementation can be implemented in the subclass of the abstract class the subclass of the abstract class is windows here and uh, we can have an extends keyword and we can put uh, something like that and we can have uh, this thing for example class windows extends operating system then we have a void get os then we have void install os and void void upgrade os so what happens suppose if we um, uh, what happens suppose if we uh, just uh, put this as comment what happens just uh, suppose i am writing uh, for example i am just writing uh the implementation for get os install os but i am uh, i am just uh, uh, omitting this uh, void upgrade so when we when you compile you just check what happens when you compile you will get an method uh, we will we will get an error like windows is not abstract and does not override the abstract method upgrade os because uh, we have hidden this abstract upgrade os but the, as per the rule when you have a abstract method it must be implemented or it must be uh, written in the subclass of that abstract class that is the another logic or another concept we should understand so when you have a abstract method it must be implemented in the subclass of that abstract method. for example get os install os and upgrade os are the methods in abstract method called operating system and this operating system class is extended with the uh, windows and it must be implemented there should not be any uh, like uh, the, the, you should not uh, omit or you should not avoid any uh, methods to be gets implemented it should be implemented like that similarly what you can do is you can create another class called linux which extends operating system and you can implement your own uh, logic and linux l is equal to new linux l dot get os like that you can have many subclass for a single abstract class or single class you can have many subclass for the single um, single classes so that is said to be a inheritance so can we use uh, can we use static method in the subclass yeah you can use 
for example you can use the static or you can use ordinary method like for example um, uh, i can uh, write get window get window extra so this get window extra is a method that we are writing in windows not on the operating system so apart from the uh, implementation of get os install os we can write any method so i can call that with uh, w dot uh, get windows extra can put a semicolon yeah next and also you can uh, you can make this as public like static method also but we know that uh, for uh, for static method no need for creating an object so you can that just like that you can print okay so where this is the method and this is the static method any doubt any doubt any doubt from your side yeah uh, the abstract the next question is abstract class and its implementation can be saved separately but no, no we can save it in a single program for example like uh, we can create a abstract class operating system and below that you can write a, below that you can have this program also for example you can have this one also and we should save this as windows.java and if you execute that it will work maybe we we should try this but we should save this file name as windows.java so that why we are saving this as windows.java because this class windows.java is a main class which has having a public static void main so we can do it but this is not a good way of doing that so first we have to save the abstract class in a separate file and we have to uh, create a windows in a separate file so that this windows can be uh, extended with that operating system so this is the be best way of uh, doing codes any doubt any doubt can we can i can we proceed to the next topic okay so now now we will uh, see interface now we can see uh, what is mean by abstract class before that i want you to guys uh, um uh like i want you to guys to just uh, tell me the answer what is mean by abstract class so abstract class is like it is used to show only the essential information that is abstraction so abstract class is nothing but the process like we will create abstract method without uh, implementation that kind of implementation can be done in the subclasses so that is all about the abstract class now we will go for something called yeah what is your doubt
what is your doubt so we'll just check uh, so he's asking whether we can have a, a class we can have a class uh, that is there is no abstract class we have a normal class with abstract method in it we'll just check so first i will compile uh, the operating system yeah, it will show an error operating system is not abstract and does not override abstract method oh, no 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 this is yeah so op operating system that is the operating system is not abstract and does not override the abstract method so what we have to do is so this is not possible we can't able to put a abstract class, abstract method inside the abstract inside the normal class whereas you can put the abstract class methods inside the abstract class so the concept it will be you can't able to put the abstract method inside the normal class you can put the abstract method inside the abstract class i think uh, this will answer your uh, question So now it will work because we made a we made that class as an abstract class. Okay. So now moving on to the interface. So interface is like same as the abstract uh, uh, classes or abstract method. So what I am going to do is I am not going to write any code. Instead, what I am going to do is I am going to modify this. So this is abstract class, and I am going to make this as interface. so interface operating system and uh, inside that interface operating system i am going to have void install void uh, os and void update so interface is nothing but it is actually interface is not a class interface is it, it is just a interface so this operating system is not a class it is a interface which has some methods like uh, get os install os and upgrade os this get os install os and upgrade os are say to be abstract method that means every method inside the interface class is a abstract method you know you no need to exp, you no need to specify that as uh, the abstract void there is no need of specifying abstract here so every method inside the uh, interface class is um, abstract so but we have to specify public because it has to be accessed uh, across the classes so you have to put that as public so then you have to save this as operating system dot java which is already saved then we have to create a subclass for this interface operating system for example windows so class windows and you should not use the keyword extends but instead you should use something called implements so the, this means this class windows implements the interface operating system and we should write the implementation for this interface and we should uh, have a method to print that so now we will compile this first we have to compile uh, java c operating system then we have to compile java c windows dot java and also we have to put uh, Uh, and you, you are getting an error like uh, uh, upgrade OS in Windows cannot implement upgrade OS in operating system install OS. Uh, this is because of attempting to access weaker access. It should be it, it should be a public. So so we should make this as public. Again, this as public. again this as public so we should make a stronger access from windows to operating system so to avoid that so now i can compile and i can execute so now you are getting the same result as like uh, the abstract class so the definition of interface is interface is a interface that will have the method without implementation 
but every method in the interface are default abstract or abstract methods that means every method you specify in interface are said to be abstract method but you no need to specify manually like saying uh, public abstract void get os install os upgrade os like that when you specify any method in the uh, in the in the in the interface then it is said to be an abstract method and the main difference between abstract class and interface is uh, this abstract class can have a subclass with the help of the keyword extends and this interface can be have a extend interface can be extended with the help of the keyword called implement so that is the main difference okay but more or less both abstract and uh, uh, more bo both abstract and uh, interface are more or less same but it has some different logics that's it so it is an uh, what is that uh, i have a question like it is, so it is a intermediate between operating system and abstract no so this interface so what i have did is i have created an operating system with uh, this is interface this is not abstract class you should not call this as interface class this is just a interface and i am extending this interface with the help of the windows so that windows implements the operating system suppose if you have abstract class you should put extends if you have a interface you should put implements that's all any doubt any doubt in interface maybe we can have some uh, yeah what is that so you are asking about members yeah i have said what is the difference between interface and abstract abstract class can be extended with the help of extends keyword interface can be implemented with the help of implements keyword so abstract class in abstract class you should specify every method as abstract with the help of abstract keyword but in interface all the methods uh, that are specified inside the interface are abstract by default it is abstract you no need to specify anything and uh, you can have some uh, members also in interface the next second question is you can have some members also interface in interface like uh, you can have a final variable like that but we will that we will just go into that later uh, in our uh, in our next uh, classes so that uh, everyone will first will understand the concepts basic concepts then we'll go for some advanced concepts like we will have some reflection uh, we will have some concepts called reflection collection so that Okay, for that stuffs we'll go for the advanced. So by now we'll just focus on the basic things. Okay. So any doubt in uh, abstract and interface? Maybe you can take some uh, two. Uh, we can we can take some minute to uh, just uh, go for some interactions. So uh, what we have learnt is. we have learned uh, up to this one so i think we have covered some most part of the uh, java concepts so what we will do is we will uh, um uh, we will get uh, we will what we will do is we will we will just continue this buffer reader and exception handling for the next classes because so normally uh, when you when you have a class you should have some interactions but uh, we have already taken Uh, like 30 minutes of the interaction so what we will do is we will we will just revise all the concepts like uh, you just uh, self reflect yourself what are the things you have learned and what are the stuffs you have learned maybe you can we can have some uh, uh, interactions in this so we'll stop taking so i am going to stop taking class uh, with this maybe we can have some interaction so maybe in the chat you can ask uh, the the topics which we have covered uh so maybe we'll discuss that okay is that okay for all okay so maybe you just uh, i will give you some uh, maybe 10 minutes of time to so just uh, self reflect yourself that what are the things you have learned and what are the topics we have studied and maybe if you if you have any questions related to that maybe you can ask like that okay so uh, sujatha is telling that i am not able to compile my program can you take a look yeah 
so i will stop my uh, i will stop my share maybe you can share your screen so that we will see you what's going on and we will rectify it maybe uh, you can share your screen now so just go to the program okay so there i think the string s should be in capital letter because in java there there is no string data type we have only the string class okay then public static uh, string r s okay okay so can i just uh, uh, take a uh, control of it uh, remote control of your system yeah so what she has created is she has created a class employee then data member is string e name in employee id string address that sounds great then uh, i think uh, you have to you have to use the same thing as like uh, okay emp id you can put eid e name eid address and uh, so you are creating a public static void you have to put void so set details string e name so again string should be in capital letter in tid then again string should be in capital letter this dot e name equal to e name this dot eid this dot address equal to address then again so you should not i think uh, yeah okay public static string get details Written the name is plus e name, and the ID is plus e ID. Okay, written R E S. Okay, so when you create a static method, no need to create an object. So instead, we can directly create set details. We can have some name x y z. One two three, maybe some address. then we can have a get detail but it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a return type method so you have to use system out dot println get details so i will save this go to the command type dir so to compile this we have to use java c emp dot java i think we forgot to close the close brackets Okay, what is this? Okay, so actually, this, like I said, you should not able to. Uh, this has to be static. Static methods can access only the static variables. yeah no need to uh, use this just delete
again this e you can put e n e i j so again that instead of taking the static you can you you would have you can put a normal method and uh, it has to be it, it can be executed but since you are using the static method i am trying to uh, run with the help of the static thing where is your command prompt open your command prompt yeah okay So string it should be in capital letter. Open the command prompt. Okay. Yeah. So now it will work. Oh, yeah, can't find why because uh, you have yeah, this is very important thing like everyone has to understand uh, the class name is employee and uh, what she has saved is emp.java so we have to save this as same name as the class name so this is the very important thing you have to learn and uh, uh, it's great like uh, we are facing this problem Yeah, now you can open the command prompt and uh, yeah, type java c space employee dot java and you can do it java c space java c space employee dot java first you have to compile java c space employee dot java then java space employee yeah that's great java java space employee yeah Enter and you can see what is it. Yeah, that's it. So now we can stop the screen so that okay. Okay, guys, any you have any queries?